looks like we have a couple more. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to reshare the document link for the new people that joined. If everyone can go ahead and jump into the doc and log their attendance while you're in, please feel free to add anything that is top of mind for you to the agenda. Agenda notes, open floor, or any PRs or bugs that need called out for special attention today. And of course, anything that um, might benefit from some extra discussion in the mailing list. Looks like we have some talking points about the release release guidance and Oktoberfest. But if anything else come, uh, is on your mind, please please add that. Looks like we have room to add. And while everyone logs their attendance, if we have anybody new on the call, I'd love to welcome you to introduce yourself and Feel free to share who you are and what brought you into the call today, how you're using Kubert. We'd love to hear from you. give it just another minute for people to fill things out and get logged in and add items to the agenda. All right, so going ahead and diving into the first item regarding release schedule change. Um, sweet, it looks like we... Hey, yeah, this, so this yeah. merged, um, I want what I just wanted to do was to if we if we have everyone we have uh, a few folks I wanted to see if we could have a discussion on this because um just to walk through what's expected from the timeline um so I don't know if uh is Daniel here or um do we have so I I don't know if we have everyone but that's okay if we don't um what I just wanted to raise at the very least was you know what what this means, what this change means. And so very simply, um, the, you know, everyone's familiar with the current release schedule for Qvert is monthly. Um, and so the, the change in this proposal, um, means that it's going to, uh, Qvert's going to follow the Kubernetes release schedule. So this is going to be three times a year. And so it's going to operate on a, a 15 week cycle. Uh, where we go through this 15 week cycle and we have a bunch of checkpoints along the way and then eventually uh, we release and and the 15 week cycle is basically designed to follow the same thing that kubernetes is doing but it's also meant to trail kubernetes and so that's what i'm trying to show in this diagram here is um, you can see that you know as part of um as part of the this um, discussion that kubernetes is going to be you know like it's one two six for example as week 34 in the year, um, the uh, Kubernetes starts its 126 cycle. Uh, that's sort of its week one of its 15 week release cycle. And then as uh, part of that, um, you know, that's when right around where Kubert would want to start its release cycle for the, the next upcoming release. And then the conclusion for Kubernetes 126 would be um, so near the end of the year, which is in 
December uh, December fifth, which is the week uh, the last week of their cycle, and then Qvert's release would um, follow that with uh, within a few weeks. So basically, um, so the takeaway is that a three releases a year. And the thing that I did want to discuss is like if we had if we had the right folks is you know how we should target this or sort of when should we start doing this and this you know this change has merged um, should we target the next release which I think is one it might not be zero five seven it might be zero five eight um, should we target it toward this um, toward this uh, to this date so it, it's really a question of okay do we have the infrastructure in place to to do this and you know any steps that we are missing to, you know, if we can enumerate any steps that we're missing to actually to do this. So I, it was really an old, sort of an open question or discussion. If we, you know, what's the, what are the next steps to really start executing on this uh, plan? So I don't know if we have everyone here. I don't know if Daniel's here or if we have others that want to comment. Um, do people think that makes sense? Like, should we look at doing the next, so the next, so we're at September 21st. So I guess the assumption is that there would be a release at the end of the month here with um, probably the 125 release. I think that's what's going to correspond to. Should the next release be um, following? So no releases until we do, till 126 would be the, the change. But if we don't do this, it would be we wait till next year. Um, we wait till 127 to start our cycle. Does anyone have any opinions on that? Do people think it's too late or should we start the cycle now? So one question I would have is, um, should we announce this type of release change in the release notes of the last release on the previous cadence before we start the schedule? Sure. Yeah, I, it's in the release notes since it just merged. Oh. Um, and so what I what I what I want to do is to, you know, follow up. I want to go to this meeting and then follow up on the mailing list as well. But what I at the very least want to make sure is that you know not only do people understand this change, I also want to make sure that you know we're prepared to to execute on it. And I I have a feeling that like we since we're already releasing monthly. I mean, it, it seems like we would be, but I just want to make sure that, um, you know, if there is any opinion as, okay, we need to change something before we suddenly do this. Um, one thing, hello, can you hear me? Yep. Cool. Uh, one thing that we talked about last week and I've got uh, half an email written to send out. Um, apologies for that is about how it, um, this change will impact things like the release notes, which um, instead of uh, what I said last week, um, on average 20 something release notes going out, we'll have you know three to four times that. And um, is there a way we can better categorize those release notes in GitHub so that we can, when it comes to automating those release notes, they already get filtered into um, uh, distinguishable categories. Um, so I don't think that's something we need to solve now, but it is something I just thought I'd, I'd bring up from last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. I, so th these are the kind of things that I, I, I definitely want to raise. It's like, you know, what are other things like with the, the this change that's going to affect um, a bunch of things? So do we need to make sure our tooling's in place to make sure that this is going to be best for the end user. So yeah, I mean, this would be one of them. So I guess, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, do we have, I mean, from my perspective, at least I would at least like, it would, I think it would be good to have some sort of labels around these things, but it sounds like we don't have the infrastructure to sort of group these things in an automated fashion. It sounds like we need to build something. Okay. Well, I, I can make a note of that, um, Andrew, and we can, maybe that's something that um, sort of is an, an argument of, okay, let's, you know, let's work on building this before we do, before we kind of sort of commit to this release. I mean, we do have time, but I mean, it's just something that at the very least we should consider. 
The well, the release notes. I, I wouldn't call the release notes a blocker for moving to um, the release schedule now because um, just because we don't have something in place now doesn't mean like it'd be a one-off manual cost while we put into place for this December release from point um, five seven. Um, you know, it's sixty release notes. It wouldn't be fun, but it also wouldn't be like a you know the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm almost, yeah, I fully understand we can always, you know, improve on it. You know, if this is something that just becomes a problem on the, the first time that we do it. Maybe we can improve on it later. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, one thing that would be nice as well, just to help with the messaging of this, I guess, is um, do you have the bandwidth to write a short blog post about this? We can put it on. Yeah, I can write a blog post for this. I, I want to, so I'm going to write an email about it just with the description of like, kind of why, just because in case people didn't read the description in the PR, just to have it on the mailing list. And um, that's why I can put it in a blog post as well. So in terms of like, you know, I, like, so in terms of getting this out there, like we're in September, um, you know, we have, you know, roughly three months, you know, before, the, I, so I guess what we're saying is we'd have roughly three months for the next release. Um, so let's say I do a blog post, we have the mailing list thread, you know, um, is that enough to say like, okay, um, we're going to make this change now? You know, I, I, I'm just, I want, I'm wondering, I want to hear some dissent, like someone saying, no, we can't do this now. Like, you know, I want to hear some reasons why. Otherwise, to me, it's like, if I don't hear anything, then it's like, we'll, then I, I prefer, then we should just go for it. I think it's fine, but I, I'm not hearing anything. So if if that's enough, like we can do, you know, get people to get the word out with, you know, some blog posts, emails, whatever. Maybe that's not much of a problem. Hey Brian, uh, Brian here. Yep. Uh, we, hey Brian. we were talking about this earlier on in the week, and there's a bit of a lead time when delivering the Qvert CI providers. So at the moment, we don't have a provider that's testing the 125 version of Kubernetes. Okay. So there's just that little bit of lead time there that we need to kind of shorten that lead time. So we're looking at maybe delivering providers with release candidates of Kubernetes versions so that we have a provider ready in time to test Kubert against the latest version of Kubernetes as, a, as, a, as, a, as it's released. Okay. <clears throat> so the release of 125 was around end of August. Okay. So like, I, and so my estimates were like that this could take, you know, like, you know, I bound right like four weeks or so, like it could take a little bit before we have a provider. Um, so yeah. like I have that, so I have that kind of in the estimates, like it, it'll take a little while, like we're, I kind of have a range of like a certain amount of time that we expect that before we do a release. Yeah. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. I just see so, that you have an estimate for the 125 release to be around the end of September 26th. And yes, yeah, so this, so okay, so for this, position. yes, so for this one, um, I would say, uh, I, I don't, I don't think we should do the, um, I don't think we should sort of do start, like what I'm saying is like, we wouldn't start our cadence, or we wouldn't start our, um, the next release, which is the one that I'm saying it would be in December, we would start working toward that one today. So we would continue with the current release process, which would be the end of the month um, for for just for, for September. And then starting in October, we sort of march toward, we switch to, instead of doing monthlies, we, we, or we make our next target um, after 126 is released. So sometime in December, January, That makes sense. So like we, we didn't, we wouldn't, so like the same, the, so like, well, let me ask this in the, the current release, um, for the next release for Qvert, um, is going to be end of September. Right. And that would be targeting Q, Kubernetes one, two, five, right. That'd be one of the support supported Kubernetes versions. Is that correct? Yes. Hopefully, hopefully we'd have a provider in time. Um, okay. There's still work ongoing on the provider, so it's not not available yet. Okay, so the so what I'm saying is the this release would be the same as normal, and then 
the next one is going to be um is where is is where we you know we do the next release in december so that that would be the that'd be the change so i what i'm saying is nothing we, nothing needs to change now or this month sorry just to clarify you we would have a release at the start of october and then our next release, we would basically just skip November and would have a release at the end of December slash January, which is then fully in step with the Kubernetes release. Yeah, that's right. Okay, gotcha. So it then that that first release, the way we're following the Kubernetes release, would be slightly shorter than what we'd then be rolling into after that. Yeah. So this one's always shorter because of the holiday in December. Okay. So this one's always a little bit tricky. So um, and also taking into account too that like you know Kubernetes targets early December, so and because they you know the, the opportunity of it slipping so that they can try and squeeze it in before the before the holiday. So take this is fully taking into account that potentially them slipping and then us you know having to be in the middle of the holiday and then pushing all the way you know until December. That's that's totally built into this. That's that's fine. So. It's it's going to be this one's going to be the last one of the year. It's going to be a very wide range. Cool. You can't see me, but I'm nodding furiously. <laughs> okay. So I um so Brian uh in terms of this provider um so um so okay like at least from my expectations to kind of get back to that point it's like I expect there to be a range of time. Uh, not only because I, of Kubernetes releases being delayed, but I, I understand there's a lot of work that goes into the provider and getting it to work. So it's going to be, you know, whenever whenever that release is available, you know, then begins our, you know, our our work towards, um, you know, we have our release candidate that we would have, you know, right around um, the time or right, right a little before the Kubernetes release, but right around it. And then um, whenever the Kubernetes is released, you know, we, we do exactly what we do today. We work on a release a release provider, um, and then and then it's sort of the same method after that. It's a um, you know it's about I think it's a we said it's the week a week of everything passing in CI, um, no bugs, no major changes, and then and then a release. Yeah, that sounds good. And we're looking to kind of speed up the provider, uh, provisioning the provider for for Kubernetes CI by um, testing with against release candidates for Kubernetes so okay. so that we can kind of get any issues out early and hopefully have the provider a bit quicker then. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, um, I mean, how? so any other thoughts, like, um, you know, any other concerns, like I, I'm at, so like December, like December, January timeline. So, at, so we'll say the next release of Kubert is beginning of October, October 1st. And then that'll be the last one on the monthly cadence. The one following that um, is going to be switching to this four month cadence, this 15 week cadence. And that release would be following Kubernetes 126. So roughly December to January timeframe. All right. I, so I don't hear any major dissent. So I think that I think like um, I think that's fine. Let's let, let's march toward that uh, that goal. I'll I'll spread it across the mailing list and blog posts um, to get the word out to everyone what the plan is. Okay, that's all I had. That Thank good. you. Thank you. All right then. Okay, um, Andrew, do you want to jump into the Hacktoberfest item? Oh uh, yeah. So earlier this week, I sent out an email, um, primarily targeted at the different repo um, reviewers, maintainers, um, about the um, what what we would need to do in order to uh, make to opt in any of our repos for Hacktoberfest. So. Um, I presume everyone knows, but if you don't, Hacktoberfest is an initiative run primarily, but I think by DigitalOcean, and they celebrate and reward people contributing to open source projects. And so it's an opportunity to get um, a, 
a bunch of eager people who haven't necessarily contributed to um, Qbert before, uh, contributing on generally the lower hanging fruit. Um, so I suggested the user guide as a good um, good example of that. And I think we've got some, I think channels on the line. I think we have some good um, uh, potential issues as well to help out with the website. Um, so I don't have any confirmation yet about any of those repos opting in. We are setting up the labeling infrastructure, or rather Daniel is setting up the labeling infrastructure to make it all happen once, um, you know, once any of the maintainers of any repos say, yep, let's, let's do it, I've got some issues here. If that goes ahead, I'm just kind of like um, preparing you all now that it would be really great um, if we could have some volunteers to help triage some of the issues. Um, if, if we do go ahead, I'm specifically thinking of, uh, the user guide might require, um, people kind of going through and just like making sure various things are, are up to date. And if they're not, then write a, um, a contained and concise, uh, issue to support it and then tagging it with the Hacktoberfest label or going through the, um, considerable amount of issues in Qbert, Qbert, um, and then kind of like triaging ones that would be appropriate for, for new users and uh, self-contained and, and well-described. So just kind of putting that out there now. Um, and that was it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Um, last item on the agenda then. Um, need a host for next year's for, or sorry, not next year, next week's uh, Kubert community meeting. I will be uh, in San Francisco for a um, work event. So hopefully someone on this call is interested and willing in filling in for me. Otherwise, I will be mailing out to the mailing list looking for a volunteer. Um. I, I would happily volunteer to do it. I haven't done it before and I'm relatively new to the community, but I'm happy to host it. It's, you know, maybe we could walk through it and just kind of go through the standard uh, standard operating procedures and I'd happily do it. Sure. Um, are you able to ping me on Kubernetes Slack and I'll find yeah, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And let's see. PRs, mailing lists, and bug scrubs. Um, if there's something um, that you have a burning desire to bring up, please add that to these lists. Otherwise, we'll filter through them and see what we can find. I'm going to go ahead and start with mailing list review since Andrew kindly placed some stuff up here. Let's take a look at. Vian's Lee is slow on Windows Guest OS. Let's see. I think this came up in a GitHub issue. Yeah. Um, last week, actually. The number of things that play into. VNC latency is a fun one. Chad, do you want to ask out loud? Um, I was just asking if you know if you have a SRI, if we have issue in the SRI UV lane that's late that anyone knows. Hey Alice, I believe we have two kinds of problems. So one of the problems is actually general, uh, not really specific to SRV. Okay. Uh, we are hitting um, like memory limits and I'm on it. I probably will have a PR tomorrow for that one. 
And the second issue is something about MAC address or being not able to reach some kind of net, network connection. I'm not sure. Um, not sure if we are actually investigating it in Woods. Uh, I think there's there's an upstream issue for the MAC address issue, Lugo, with the SRV plugin. Um, okay. But that that's a flake that we've been carrying for a while, and yeah, the issue you mentioned with the memory is is the main one at the moment. We're also seeing some flakiness in the storage lanes as well. But so there's the retest emerge at the moment is quite high. So just um, if you have PRs, you know, please be patient. Uh, there's a couple of flakes in, at the moment. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I I got the memory issue in my PR. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's just to know. Awesome. Thanks for asking. So actually on that VNC is slow issue, I kind of messed up. I replied with uh, suggesting that the guest agent would, you know, improve the mouse coordination and I forgot to reply list. So I just replied directly to Zinlin. In that case, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave that off then for now. CVE pulling up. It's an impressive one. Users with permission to create VMIs can construct VMI specs which allow them to read arbitrary files on the host. It's good to see that getting attention. Thank you. All right, in that case, I can go ahead and jump into pull requests. Oh, I think I see a hand raised. If that was that, that was just me from the previous issue. Oh.
are okay on PRs. Nothing idle. Occupied by another VM after VM stopped. take. Looks like they want to be able to schedule two different VMs or overcommit the GPU hardware and they want to be able to delete the first pod that is claiming the GPU without that first pod losing the lock or I guess retaining a lock on the GPU. I would probably suggest to uh, somehow difference the, the GPU uh, on a on Kubernetes level. So mm -hmm. it's posy uh, as some other resource. So if you have GPU A, make it like GPU A uni unique, and then just don't reference the the GPU by other VMs. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot really recommend anything else. But Lubo uses the um, issue here that the GPU is not released. Really? I don't know if I read it, it's like it says what you expected to happen. Do not release GPU resource when VM one stopped. So once uh, I'm reading it as if VM one and VM two are in contention for the same GPU, VM but VM one started and claimed the GPU first. They want to be able to stop VM one without VM one losing. Okay, I think I read it in the other way. Okay. That's how I read it. If I'm wrong, I no, no, I think I read it wrong. Okay, yeah, I was I was tempted to think it was um, mm -hmm. what you were recommending at first too, and then I had to reread. Um, Wordy, but I hope it gets the idea across.
debugging cloud in it. Looks like an Ubuntu. After restart machine. That depends on how NetPlan is working in the host. sure how to I'm gonna think on that um, it's a little bit hard to understand what it's actually happening yeah I, I mean I've run into all kinds of you know failure to configure network stuff on my Kubernetes as well but it's the number I'm, I'm, of places to look yeah I'm pretty sure that the clouding will only run once so after the restart if the changes are not persistent, for example, if the user is using cloud container disk as a root disk, then it may happen that all the configuration is gone. Yeah, um, there's definitely, I wonder, maybe we can at least ask for the... Sorry, if I don't do this now, I won't do it. Hopefully I can come back and do this in a couple of weeks if no one else does it first. Ryan, can you answer this one? Sorry, Lugo. Ryan, uh, I think Ryan dropped. Uh, it's part Ryan, of the six, sorry. Six scale 
I think he would be the best person to answer this. Do we just want to CC him on the issue then? Yeah, that's it. I think or H might get you there. Sorry, or H, yeah. What? I'm, I'm fine, fine. One second, I'll try and get a few. Yeah, so this this is uh, no issue. We have a reply on the mailing list for this one, I believe. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Um, can we have a look on the message that is uh, for the build launcher? Yeah. Zoom chat if you want to read it yourself more carefully. Doesn't look like anything remarkably informative. I saw something very similar. Oh, I see that the, the message. Uh, early mid domain log is exceeded. Uh, I would say it seems like we don't allocate enough memory. I will try to follow up the with match. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember what our docs say about that because I feel like our docs actually say something on the topic.
Oh, um, probably, probably this is going to be fixed by DR, which I posted to the chat. Uh, setting the limit to six gigabytes and we set it to to the guest and our locking is probably going to be around five gigabytes and yeah that will basically fail all the time as, as far as I can see so I would ask the user to just try out the this this patch or yeah. remove the limits for the VM. Sounds good. Thank you for finding that. Is there any docs update that should be made in light of the memory setting pull request here? I'm not sure. Um, maybe we can improve the documentation a little bit. Let's go. Let's try to ask him to not set the memory limit. So, in fairness, I guess some operate, you know, operational constraints do require limits set on all. Yeah, of course. I understand yeah. that, but just to, to be sure that this is the issue. Thanks. Looks good. All right, that covers. Let's see. PRs, issues, and mailing list. So I think we should be good to go. Um, Larry Dewey, thank you for volunteering for next week's community meeting. I see your ping in Kubernetes Slack, and I will touch base with you. And as always, thank you all for attending and participating. I will see you, we will see you, same time, same place next week, and I will see you again the week following. Have a great week. Sounds great, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.